In this video, we're going to be discussing the Ottawa ankle and foot rules. These rules are a set of criteria that are used to determine whether or not radiography, in other words x-rays, are necessary prior to initiating PT treatment, especially if we suspect that there might be a fracture somewhere in the ankle or somewhere in the foot. That being said, let's go over and look at the criteria here in this table. These are the Ottawa rules. On the left, those pertaining to the ankle. On the right, those pertaining to the foot. And an important note here, you only need to satisfy one of these. It doesn't matter which one. If you satisfy one of these, it's an automatic need for radiography prior to initiating PT treatment to rule out a fracture in any of these bones. Okay. Now the first two criteria here are shared by both the ankle and foot rules. And those are number one, inability to bear weight immediately after the injury. And number two, inability to bear weight four steps during the initial evaluation. Again, it doesn't have to be both of these, just one of them okay, would automatically necessitate radiography prior to initiating PT treatment. Okay? So that's for both ankle rules and foot rules. Now let's look at the one specific for the ankle. So first we have bony tenderness along the distal six centimeters of the posterior edge of the fibula or tip of the lateral malleolus. Okay? So right here, here's the lateral malleolus. The way I think about this is you go to the, the base of the lateral malleolus down here, go up six centimeters, and that posterior edge right there, they have tenderness to palpation anywhere in there. Again, that would necessitate radiography. Also, bony tenderness along the distal six centimeters of the posterior edge of the tibia, or the tip of the medial malleolus. This is analogous to what we saw for the lateral malleolus. So now we're on the medial side. So we go down to the inferior base of the medial malleolus. We go up six centimeters. And anywhere in this posterior distribution right here, if there is tenderness to palpation on that bone, that would constitute a need for radiography. Okay. So those were the ankle-specific rules. Now for the foot-specific rules. The first is bony tenderness at the base of the fifth metatarsal. So that's lateral. We're going to palpate the base of the fifth metatarsal. If there's bony tenderness, well, then that's going to constitute a need for radiography. And then finally, bony tenderness at the navicular. That's medial. So we find the navicular. The easiest way to do that is to find the navicular tuberosity and palpate that. Again, if there's bony tenderness there, that also constitutes a need for radiography. Now, when you're doing this, you need to be sure to, number one, palpate the entire distal six centimeters of the tibia and the fibula. One common mistake is to just target that uh, most prominent aspect of the lateral and medial malleoli. But remember, we need to go up from that also, from the base of the malleolus, up six centimeters on both sides. Okay. Number two, don't neglect the importance of medial malleolar tenderness. Sometimes this is overlooked for whatever reason. Again, a lot of times that medial malleolar tenderness does indicate that there is a fracture somewhere, small or otherwise. And then finally, the Ottawa and ankle foot rules are actually only valid on those over the age of 18. This hasn't been studied as much in individuals under 18. So if you really want these psychometrics over here to be most appropriate, Again, it's going to be for individuals over the age of 18. That being said, the psychometrics were evaluated by Bachman et al. in 2003. And what they found is that the average sensitivity of each of these was 98%, and the specificity was only 32%. So just because somebody has tenderness in one of these areas, or they're unable to bear weight, doesn't mean that they have a fracture. Okay. So it could be a severe ankle sprain with no fracture. Um, it could be plantar fasciitis. There's a number of things there. It could even be gout. Again, uh, just because they have any of these things doesn't mean that they have a fracture. But then look at this sensitivity. It's all the way up at 98%. So if you look at all of these criteria and the patient satisfies none of them, they don't have any of these, well, then there's a 98% chance that they don't need radiography because they don't have a fracture. So overall, these rules are much better for ruling out the need for radiography and therefore ruling out that they actually have a fracture. And again, these values, 98 and 32%, these are average values. It turns out that each one of these individual criteria have a value, but they've just been averaged together into these. So poor specificity for ruling up the need for radiography, but very good sensitivity for ruling out the need for it.
Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.